Hey guys, Andrew here for Next Shift and today we have something a little bit special. We are joined by two people here from Komu. This is Kenway. Hi. And this is Ting. Hi. So while we're here to talk about Komu, which is, uh, you guys promised that everyone can own a self-driving car. So uh, can you guys tell us what is what does Komu stand for? Uh, Komu stands for communication, mm-hmm. commute, and also uh, community. Yeah, so in English, we call it Komu or you can call it Komu in BM. Yeah. For komunikasi. Yes, correct. I prefer Komu. Right. <laughs> <laughs> so we're going to talk about Komu. It sounds more natural for me anyway. Um, so uh, what we, what, uh, why are we guys calling you guys here today? Because we saw a video of you guys driving in Asia and you guys' hands are completely off the steering wheel. So like, is it possible to be installed on any car? Like, how is that possible? For now, uh, we are pioneering in for the Proga brands first, for their models first, then uh, slowly we'll move on to uh, other brands like Proton, uh, Honda or Toyota. So basically our software is universal, just that we have to um, customize the hardware for different car makes, yeah, different car models, right? Okay, so like, uh, I think Ting is more familiar with the technical side of things. Right. So how are you guys regulating the steering wheel for starters? How we okay? So I'll just explain a little bit about how cars work recently, right? I mean, new cars, because of all the uh, environmental laws, everything has to become more eco. So cars are actually now more electronics. Yeah, you, you, I think I think you have heard of like uh, people saying that cars are now computers on wheels. Uh-huh. <laughs> yeah. So um, actually, um, steering wheel is just uh, another c- computer. On the car so we can actually uh, control the steering wheel digitally by injecting uh, some can bus messages lah, mm-hmm. because uh, cars usually all the electronics they talk you're using the can bus protocol mm-hmm. so you, you can look it up on google what is a can bus mm-hmm. yeah cool so uh, that's the steering part of things it's controlled by software but what about the throttle because like in the video, where we, uh, although the steering wheel is controlled by the software, uh, we can see that you guys are still controlling the throttle, like the braking and the gas. So mm. are there any plans to introduce a way for the car to regulate these themselves? Mm, yes, actually our system, the software itself, it's already ready for the, we call it longitudinal control. Yes, oh, yeah? yes. So like stepping on the gas and stepping on the brake as well. Okay, mm-hmm. the reason why we haven't actually rolled out on uh, the video itself, you can see, is uh, because of some safety reasons. Mm-hmm. Um, we have to be honest. Right now, we are still uh, in the midst of uh, finding out how to control it properly, like mm-hmm. how humans actually drive, lah. Mm-hmm. So we we actually plan to um, roll this out slowly. Uh, hopefully by uh, January, so we can talk about the beta testing afterwards. Lah. Mm-hmm. Okay, that's great. But the next thing is, what about safety? Because in the video, you, your hands are completely off the steering wheel. So what's stopping Malaysians from just thinking, it is it's autopilot. I will just let my hands off the steering wheel and check out my phone and reply to messages. So are there any safety features to prevent this from happening? Oh, okay. So, yeah. You ask that question because you, you see, right, in yeah. the US Tesla, they have those videos of people sleeping in the car. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, we Malaysians, we take things for granted. I'm, I'm sorry. <laughs> so, <laughs> so yes, we, we actually need to uh, monitor how we humans drive. So like in, for Tesla or even like, uh, I think X50, right, the mm-hmm. new, new, new flagship uh, Proton car, they have this uh, driving monitoring where you have to constantly have your hand on the steering wheel because mm-hmm. of the torque sensor. They actually sense it, you're actually paying attention while you're mm-hmm. driving. Mm-hmm. So for our system, because uh, uh, we have a front-facing camera and also a back-facing camera. Mm-hmm. So the back-facing camera can actually look at you and monitor if you're actually paying attention. Okay. So it gives you uh, a better freedom and how you, and just it's just better convenience. You don't have to always touch the wheel mm-hmm. all the time, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, so that is how we control and monitor how you drive. Lah. Mm-hmm. So as long as they're looking in front, the system will work. Correct, correct. If they look somewhere else, what will happen? Uh, oh yeah. So uh, when when they look somewhere else or get distracted, uh, it's actually just a machine learning model behind all of this thing. Mm-hmm. We will we will sense that you are actually distracted. Mm-hmm. When you're distracted, it will beep for few minutes. 
Yes, uh, right now it's few minutes. Uh, we, will, we will lower that down. Depends on how he, uh, the drivers feel it's more natural. Mm -hmm. Yeah, sometimes if you if you if you get warning too early, it's very annoying and mm -hmm. yeah. So we want we want a balance right there. We are still looking for that balance. Mm -hmm. So yeah, that's how we monitor the drivers for now lah. Okay, mm. that's good. Uh, it's a lot more convenient than just holding yeah, the steering wheel because just because they're holding it doesn't mean they're paying attention. Mm -hmm. correct, correct. Yeah. <laughs> so the target is to get to achieve level two semi-autonomous driving. Uh, yes. Now, now we are aiming on that and um, we do not promise to go to level 3, level 4, level 5 mm -hmm. yet but now in short term, yes, we are looking into this level 2. Mm -hmm. So that would mean it can control the throttle and the steering wheel. Uh, what about and traffic also jam? Yes, yes. So uh, particularly in traffic jam, uh, I think more people they actually clash into the front car because you keep on, you have to keep on stepping and letting mm -hmm. go the brake, right? So mm -hmm. when you lose focus, then you hit. So mm -hmm. now uh, what we want to add in uh, for this uh, traffic uh, condition as well is the stop and go, stop and go. So mm -hmm. basically it will follow the lead car. Uh, we will set uh, the a minimum distance mm -hmm. so that when it hit that distance, it will stop. Then when the front car moves, it will follow. So this is also another feature that we think in Malaysia, it will be very useful mm -hmm. as, Definitely. as we have a lot of traffic jams here. Yes. Yeah. So, so you guys will implement this in the final, in the finished product? Uh, Yes, yes. So they can just stop for, uh, let's say at the traffic light, uh, they can stop for uh, 30 seconds and then the moment the car in front goes, it it will the car will follow. follow. Yes. Up to what speed exactly? Or is it still under discussion? Still under discussion. Still discussion. Yeah, but it's possible for them to stop and go follow. Yes, yes. That's very not, nice. Not, not only limited to traffic lights, mm -hmm. uh, even we say in uh, tall, yeah, before mm -hmm. before and after toll, you see mm -hmm. the, the converging traffic, right? Mm -hmm. So there'll be a lot of uh, this slow traffic. So mm -hmm. we aim to help that situation as well. So the next thing is that will be on everyone's mind. Like I'm very interested in this product, but are there any legal consequences? <laughs> um, for the legal side of things, now we are trying to work with the government mm -hmm. and to get close to the the bodies that are related, like mm -hmm. JPJ or even, mm -hmm. yeah, most uh, mainly is JPJ. So mm -hmm. we like to get close to them and then only we can discuss more on the legal side of things. So for mm -hmm. now, no, we are illegal and <laughs> and we, we would like to get, we would like to uh, get their approval to have this uh, test bed mm -hmm. in CyberJar to, so that we can have a legal testing uh, mm -hmm. yeah, venue. Yeah. Okay, so it's, it depends entirely on the government whether you guys will go or not. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so hopefully they see this video and they know that it's a very promising product. <laughs> okay, so legally you guys will be doing everything necessary to be in compliance with the government. So if I'm interested and I want to be a beta tester for Komu, where do I go? Uh, you can visit the Komu.ai website and maybe you can register uh, to request for a demo. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then, and then after that, we'll uh, update you through the email. So nice. when, yeah. So and then, uh, depending on the timeline, they will hear from you guys. Yes, uh, we hope to have our test drive event by next year, January. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so we'll blast out the emails to all the names. Yep. Okay. Uh, do they have to be a specific owner? Like if they own a Honda or a Produa or a Proton? No, no, no. It's okay. You can just come and test drive our technology. So okay. we hope we hope we hope to hear from other. Uh, owners of other car brands mm -hmm. as well, not only limited to Produa. Okay, so they don't have to own a Produa to be one of the in the uh, list? No, no, no. Okay. Just come and test drive on our car. <laughs> okay, awesome, yeah. awesome. So that is Komu and what it is capable of doing, which is adding level 2 semi-autonomous driving to an affordable car like Asia. It's very, very nice to have you guys here with us. Uh, can't wait. So let's think. And we wish you guys all the best for a rollout during March 2021, was yeah. it? Yes. Yeah, so March 2021, that's the date to keep in mind. This has been Andrew and it's been a pleasure to have these two with us today. And we hope you guys will be interested in Komu and you guys can check it out at komu.ai. Thank you.